Um, all right. Now, listen, uh, this week, earlier in this week, um, I said that I had engaged uh, the Official Information Act to find out um, funding um, that seemed to me to be secretive and hidden in respect to local government authorities in New Zealand. Uh, and uh, in the wake of the exposure of Meridian's, which is 51% owned by us, Meridian Energy's payoff of various groups that they were concerned would protest against them, uh, and, and including uh, three local runaka or um, iwi groups uh, in the Waitaki area uh, to do with regaining their consents for lakes Benmore, Aviemore, Waitaki, and I think Ohau as well, or the Ohau uh, Hydroelectricity Scheme. Um, I decided to ask the same question of my local council. Now, I've been on my local council for, this is my eighth year, yeah. And so e each year I have gone through a process called long-term or annual plans, which is where you get a breakdown um, of the funding that is applied by your council to whatever it might be. And then as a result of that, you strike the rates. Um, and for some people this year, uh, they got astronomical, particularly in the Queenstown area um, and the Wanaka area, astronomical rate increases up to 40 or 50%. And um, during the annual and long-term process, I became increasingly concerned that I wasn't receiving the kind of financial information that I needed to be able to make um, an appropriate decision. And I, I, I raise this issue every time and I never get a, a suitable response. So I've been voting against, as you might have guessed, the annual or long-term plans for quite a while now and have been usually a voice in the wilderness, but I have to say a couple of other councillors have joined me in and uttering similar thoughts. So, as an elected member, I don't know what the answers to these questions are. So, I utilise the Official Information Act, or the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act, I think it's called, uh, but it's basically the OIA set up for local government. And I asked uh, some questions to do with the extent of funding of my council, the Otago Regional Council, to local iwi authorities. Uh, because there was nothing in any of the information that was publicly available or even to me as an elected member that itemised that. And the reason why I asked was because um, the Otago Regional Council, like many other councils in New Zealand, believes that it's in a treaty or a teiteriti partnership with local Māori, which is nonsense of course and I have railed about it but what I wanted to work out was if what are the practical financial costs if any of being in a partnership with local Māori okay so and I thought well that's a fair question to ask the, the Otago Regional Council says it's now a treaty partner even though it's not the crown or its representative uh, with local mana whenua and the local mana whenua, which is just the name for the local iwi or Māori people who live in the area, but it, it's not all Māori people, so be very, very clear about this. It's only the local iwi that asks or tells you that that's their region. And for my area, that's Naitahu, all right? And the Naitahu tribe. Um, and they have, oh gosh, set themselves up into a commercial entity. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder why they set themselves up into a commercial entity. I must go and have a look at that. And I have done. Uh, anyhow, the question I asked, and it's a question that every elected member in New Zealand should be asking, is this. If you are entering a treaty relationship or partnership with your local mana whenua or your local Māori iwi, um, I'm assuming that this is a partnership of equals, right? So here we go. And um, that means that um, the local iwi, particularly if they're commercially well endowed like Naitahu, will be putting some money into that relationship and so will you, the elected bodies and um, you'll basically be covering each other's own expenses, right? Or your own expenses and, and how that partnership works. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 
What I found was that from 2020 to 2024, so over the financial years, 2020 to 2024, so it's four financial years, three and a half million dollars had been paid by the ORC to iwi authorities, three and a half million dollars. And in addition to that, another one point, sorry, 3.4 million dollars, uh, 3.5, my apologies, it's 3.5, but to get the statistics right, to be exact, it's three million four hundred eighty four thousand seven hundred and twenty four dollars had been paid for contracts that had been entered into between the Otago Regional Council and Iwi authorities. And then that that was the last four financial years, $3.48 million. That in actual fact, the ORC was currently involved in contracts totaling almost $1.8 million for this financial year. So you add the 3.4 or 3.5, I guess is the nearest, and you add the 1.8 and you get to $5.3 million is the cost of the Otago Regional Council ratepayer for being in a partnership with local iwi. Now here's the question. Um, one, where would you find that information if you didn't find it via Michael Laws and the Local Government Official Information Act request? Answer, you wouldn't. It's in no publication the Otago Regional Council put out. It's not in their annual plan information. They don't consult on it with their community. So it's in no consultation documents. It's not even in their annual report at the end of the year in which they're telling you how they've spent their money. They can tell you, for example, how much money they've given to Michael Laws for my expenses, as in driving down to Dunedin or flying somewhere on ORC business, but they can't tell you they've spent $5.3 million on basically providing an economic wherewithal to local iwi groups, who unsurprisingly have commercialised themselves in, an, in a commercial company and, and have negotiated these contracts uh, with, with the Otago Regional Council. There isn't anything that they do that's of any great value, I have to say. It's just it seems some form of exorbitant koha that is paid from the Otago Regional Council to a very, very, very small group of Maori individuals and their corporate structure. Now, the Otago Regional Council doesn't have a lot of Maori in it. In fact, um, I would suggest to you possibly that there are more Pacific Islanders or Filipinos that work um, in the regional boundaries than Maori as a population, but uh, I stand to be corrected. But certainly uh, in the Queenstown, Wanaka area or the Dunstan area that I represent, uh, that would literally be true. Uh, but um, the other thing that, of course, is true is if that is Otago, which has very few Maori in it at all, and it's costing $5.4 million to enter into a partnership arrangement with local mana whenua, then start duplicating that across all of the regional, city, and district councils of this country. And as I said, I will be putting, I have put already in local government information requests for every council in New Zealand to see what that total sum of money will be. But partnership isn't where you pay people ever. You pay a group of people based upon the colour of their skin and the culture that they represent. Um, a sum of money just for being that culture or that particular ethnicity. I wouldn't have thought so. And partnership is we enter a partnership talking about stuff, working through stuff. It isn't where I give you money. That, that's almost like I'm giving this, these people pocket money, except it's $5.4 million, and you can do with it what you like. But here's $5.4 million just for the privilege of talking to you. That seems inordinately odd to me, but the worst part about this is how secret it is and how this information is kept from both the public uh, and from media, and even from elected officials in this country. Sometimes you've got to ask the right question, but you shouldn't have to. I thought local government was meant to be transparent, open, and accountable. Well, you'd have to say on this issue, 
It is none of those things. All right? 